I'm gonna tell you right now that the one secret to getting stuff done is quite simply to do stuff. It's a big day. Today is the day that I am becoming a solicitor in England and Wales, hopefully, if all goes to plan. Just waiting for the Lenovo. These beasts, everyone has one. If they're a lawyer, accountant, etc. For this to start up, here we go. But I'm just like getting this up now. Give me a second. So, in the Senior Courts of England and Wales, I am satisfied that Liam Andrew Porritt has complied with the SRA Authorization of Individuals Rules 2019 and is therefore admitted as a solicitor of the Senior Courts. That is awesome. <laughs> so here's my certificate saying that I am legit now a solicitor. And along with that, I got another email about a week ago saying, Dear Liam, we are delighted to offer you a contract of employment as a newly qualified lawyer at Clifford Chance. So that contract now signed, I am now a solicitor in England and Wales, which <laughs> is scary, but also just like incredible. I am obviously delighted. Like it has been a very long journey to get here. I am now 26 years old, about to turn 27. And I started this journey of becoming a lawyer. Let me first of all, right, let me run you through like how I have become a solicitor and the journey to get here. So I started out in 2014 as a student at the University of Cambridge. I'll show you some photos or, you know, bits of me at uni. I then went on a year abroad to France, Spain and Peru in my third year. And while I was in Spain, in Madrid, I was actually working as part of my year abroad at a law firm, which was an amazing opportunity to get insight into the world of law. I applied for two vacation schemes. Now, there are some back schemes that still exist. These are work experience placements for a couple of weeks. They still exist at some firms. My firm does not now offer them. Instead, they have a ton of other online virtual internships for people to do. So there's much wider access. And also they have a bunch of other schemes that they run in first and second year of university. So that was kind of the start of my legal journey, I did this internship and then I did two VAC schemes at Slaughter in May and Clifford Chance in the summer of 2017. Oh, that's a long time ago. <laughs> I'm so old. Anyway, then I went through the last year of university, came out, got my degree from Cambridge. Having graduated, I then took six months off before doing the graduate diploma in law, which if you haven't studied law at university, is still in the UK the route you will take. So you study law as a non-law student and you do, it's a pretty intense program of study for nine months-ish. Do the exams at the end of that, which I personally found like pretty tough, but did well in them. And at that point I was then like on a par, I guess, with people who studied law, even though they'd spent three years like Beth studying it and knew much more than I did. But in the eyes of qualifying as a solicitor, I was in the same position. And I then did the LPC, which had two stages for me. So stage one was a set of subjects and then stage two was a different set of subjects with a load of sort of skills built in. Now, some people are still doing the LPC, but they're slowly transitioning over to something called the SQE, which again has two parts, just like the LPC had two stages. But those two parts are quite different. The first First part is like much more legal knowledge and the second part is much more about skills you develop whereas on the LPC you kind of did both in tandem. I personally did the accelerated LPC because my firm <laughs> made us kind of get through it really quickly and get I guess a good start to life as a trainee solicitor like working pretty hard for a period of six months before starting work as a trainee lawyer. So I did the LPC from January 2020 through to August 2020. And I also did an integrated master's with that. So I did business finance and business management and that got me this overall master's in law, which was awesome. And in August 2020, I then began as a trainee solicitor at my firm, Clifford Chance. So having done the end part of the LPC remotely because of COVID, I then started my job in August, like in that weird period where we were kind of in a semi lockdown, but things were easing up and little did we know that we actually be in a lockdown again a few months later so I started had this like brief moment of coming into the office a little bit and then most of my first and lots of my second seat in derivatives first and then corporate were working from home a lot of the time. I'm going to come back onto the different seats I did and how I chose the department I went into but just to kind of finish this bit of like the overall high level journey I then did my third seat in litigation and my fourth seat in Paris in antitrust competition law and around 
around three or four months ago, started to think about like, where do I want to qualify? What department do I want to go into? And then I basically, within my own firm, had to write down like the different departments I was interested in. So I put litigation and corporate at the time. But ultimately, after all of that, I'm now qualified in August 2022 as a solicitor in England and Wales. And <laughs> I mean, I've got to say, when I started this journey as a third year university student, I was 20, 21. And I don't think I thought that it would take eight years of higher education, like doctor style in order to become a lawyer. But I finally got through all of that and now am a proper legit lawyer. So how did I decide which department I wanted to go into and which department am I going into? Just want to build the suspense a little bit longer. If at this point in the video you're like, I reckon I know, drop it down in the comments like right now and I'll believe you, you know, I mean, if you watch the rest of the video and then comment, <laughs> you can relay information back to me. But I would be interested to see if people comment now like where they think I'm going to end up to see what people think of me. Anyway, I mean, feel free. If not, no worries. I decided which department to qualify into after lists, talking talking to my parents, talking to friends, a lot of internal dilemma, talking to tons of people who work at my firm and even other firms. There was one guy who left uh, my firm who I thought would give a really good external opinion on where I should go. So I, first of all, did a seat in derivatives. Now, derivatives was amazing. I learned an absolute ton around finance, the world of financial products. Particularly, I worked on structured products, which are kind of like bonds, basically this complex world of synthetic security securitization. There's so many big concepts and ideas that make the world of finance go round. These are how finance departments of big businesses are ensuring that they balance risk and they manage their money and they ensure that they never run out of cash, hopefully. And these tools are things that no one teaches you about unless you specifically work in them. So I found that hugely beneficial, but it is quite a niche, like it is a relatively small part of a very big puzzle. And I think so for me, my personality, I very much like understanding the whole, like a much more holistic picture. And I really love understanding these smaller parts, but I think I wanted to be a bigger part of the overall picture. Second seat I did in M&A and last summer for M&A was chaos. There have been just so many deals happening. And so my time in the M&A department was very, very busy. But I really learned a huge amount. I got a good level of responsibility, even as just a second seat trainee. I felt like my contribution was hugely valued. And I absolutely love the kind of client interaction, the idea of there are problems that arise, we discuss them with the clients. And okay, I wasn't the one doing the discussing, but I could see that the associates and partners were. And I really love the back and forth of like, this is an issue, how do we deal with that in the documents? So yeah, I, I really enjoyed my time in an A. You can again, watch my day in the life in the office at that point of being an M&A lawyer and see what that was like. And I think also inherently the subject matter I really loved. I love as like you guys probably know, companies and understanding how they work and even boring stuff like board minutes, which, you know, to most people, it's like, who cares? Like I found them interesting. So yeah, M&A was a big contender for me in terms of where I was going to qualify. And I had applied and put that as one. Third seat I went into was litigation. A totally different department from M&A, like very different set of challenges, probably much less client contact at a junior level, but you do have this real intellectual challenge. So I think, you know, from my studies, I always loved grappling with complex ideas. I'd always been quite closeted academic, I guess, in terms of loving getting into the nitty gritty of doing a dissertation, of reading around one topic area. And I felt like litigation really gave me the ability to combine academic pursuit of understanding a complex area through research and through really high level thinking, honestly, in a way that maybe I didn't get in other departments and combine that with this is a real world thing though. I'm not not just doing this for academic purposes. I'm doing this because there is a client who has a problem that we are trying to solve. So it was kind of like the best of both worlds in that sense of I get to take something that is interesting and complex and apply it to the real world, but less client contact, much less involved in the day to day business, like talking to clients, really engaging in how their business 
functions, I guess, was my personal experience. And so I think that was a definite downside for me of litigation, but again, a real strong contender at this point, and I applied also to go into our litigation department. Finally, I have done competition law, and competition law has been incredibly interesting. I think it's probably one of the most interesting areas of law I've found for me personally. So it's very economic, it's in the detail of how does this market work? Let's say we've got the market for phones and you need to understand who are the main competitors? How do they make sales? Like what are their payment structures like? Do they incentivize people by giving discounts? And so all of the kind of stuff that goes into analyzing a market is very in the weeds of how the businesses within that market operate. And that kind of economic business focus, I absolutely loved. I think for me, the main thing was you are, as I said, for derivatives, it's somewhat a part of a bigger picture. So generally when you're doing competition law, it's due to a corporate transaction, a merger or an acquisition that's happening. So you'll be involved in that process, but not at the center of it. And similarly, if there's an investigation, yes, antitrust is the heart of the investigation, but it's kind of a small part of that overall business. And so I think, again, I found that sort of slightly ancillary position wasn't probably quite for me, but I could absolutely see, like, if there's an area of law I had to go into and had to choose to pursue more, it would probably be antitrust, because I think competition law is just so fascinating. So before the big reveal of how I decided which department to qualify into and where I am actually going to be qualifying as an associate, I really quickly want to tell you about today's sponsor, Masterworks. As I grow in my career and my earnings rise, but I also become more and more pressed for time, I'm increasingly looking for smart investments that will enable me to build a diversified portfolio of assets that hopefully grow in value over the long term without me needing to spend lots of time learning and making complex investment decisions. My personal approach to investing, even more so given the current geopolitical and macroeconomic uncertainty, is therefore to invest gradually in a diverse range of assets and asset classes and hold those assets for the medium to long term. So when I heard about Masterworks, I was really keen to start using the platform and to tell you about them. Masterworks enables investors to gain access to the high-end art market. The art market itself has doubled S&P 500 returns over the last 25 years and has shown even stronger performance at times of high inflation. On top of that, contemporary art has a negative correlation with other asset classes. The only problem it costs millions of dollars to add blue chip art to your portfolio. Well, that is until now. Masterworks analyzes millions of data points to identify which paintings seem most likely to rise in value, acquires the painting and breaks it up into SEC qualified shares for you to invest in. Masterworks has so far offered over 130 paintings on their platform with 500,000 users. To date, they've sold six paintings for an average net return to investors of 29%. As a result, demand for art is high and there is a waitlist to access Masterworks, but my viewers can skip it by just clicking the link in the description. So overall, I genuinely feel the range of experience I've got has been amazing. Now, I don't want to sugarcoat like the experience of being a trainee. Being a trainee, you have to do rubbish at times. Like there are always tasks that every trainee has to do that are frankly dull. But the reality of my experience has been actually because of the diversity of different departments I've gone into, I genuinely feel like I have actually learned a huge amount about the world of finance and business and the legal sphere surrounding that. But ultimately for me, I think it just came down to going with my gut, which maybe has already come across. Time for the big reveal. So I will be qualifying into, drum roll please, our corporate team. So now at my firm, we just have kind of one big corporate team that does both private and public M&A as well as general advisory work to companies of all different types, advising them on everything from stuff like ESG and how they can meet their ESG goals to reorganizations of their business, moving money around within the business, maybe for tax reasons. So it's a really diverse range of work, but it is generally for the large part M&A transactions, so mergers and acquisitions. I think for me overall, it was just a love of real client contact and client engagement, plus just a fascination with businesses and companies and how they operate and the things that make them work. And I felt like as much as I love litigation and I loved the real mental challenges that it offered me, I didn't feel like it was as well aligned with probably my personality as someone who's, <laughs> if you've watched the q and I did, kind of fairly extroverted, fairly talkative, really likes engaging with people and working on problems together. 
rather than what I felt was a more slightly less open, talkative, negotiation-centric role. So that ultimately is why I chose corporate. But it <laughs> does have its downside in the sense that the hours tend to be very intense at times and then maybe slightly less intense at other times. So we shall see how that goes. The next question I think that naturally comes up is how did I manage to make sure that I could qualify into the department that I wanted? Because the reality is honestly that a training contract you have, at least at many firms, is this series of rotations around four different departments within a firm. And so you need to make a positive impression during each of those six month stints in order for that department to want you back. And the honest reality is like, if you do not, not everyone gets offered a job at the end of their training contract and certainly not everyone gets offered a job in the department that they would most like to qualify into but the main thing I wanted to give as a takeaway and the reason I think I was able to do a very good job throughout the last two years and I learned this pretty quickly because I got it wrong was essentially making sure that I managed my workload properly to allow me to do a fantastic job. And what I mean by that is like this job is incredibly busy. All jobs have busy periods and this has like particularly busy periods. And I think initially, uh, certainly into like when I was in corporate right at the start, I started taking on more and more and more work. And I got to a point where I was really, really struggling to stay on top of things. And I could feel, I got feedback saying that the quality of my work was dipping. And I think had I not kind of taken action at that point to speak to my supervisor, to speak to partners, and say, I'm really sorry, but I can't take on any more work and I actually need to be taken off a couple of things because this one thing is getting exceptionally busy and I need to be able to focus on that to do a great job. And honestly, people understood that. They took action to make sure that I could be more focused on that one matter. And that meant that I was there for in a position to have the time to do a better job. And for me, it's been really just a question of like, okay, I have a bit more time on my hands. I'm going to spend that time making sure that every piece of work I do is as good as it can be. That means spending an hour or two extra on this task to make sure that I've checked it, to make sure that I've 100% understood what is going on, to make sure that I've checked in my mind, does this all make sense? Am I happy with what I'm delivering here? Is this in the format that's going to make it for the person who's receiving it as easy as possible to process? If it's not, I need to do some more work on this to make sure it's in as helpful a format as possible and that there are as few mistakes as possible. All right. So the big question then is what next? Like, where do we go from here? Well, I'm now an associate. First thing is I get a month of leave off for having completed my training contract. It's called qualification leave. And most firms offer this in some way. Mine is unpaid. Basically, you take a month off work and you get to do what you want. So I am going on an amazing trip with Beth for a month. And I'm sure I will be posting something about it, potentially taking my camera with me. Then I will come back to the UK in October and begin life as an associate in the corporate team back in London. I will, of course, make more videos about what life as a newly qualified lawyer is like, but I think the main thing is going to be I'm going to have more responsibility. The expectations are going to be higher. I'm going to be given more integrated work because as a trainee, you're going to leave the team in six months. It's quite difficult at times to give like a huge amount of responsibility because fundamentally you need trainees not to be irreplaceable because obviously they <laughs> leave the team and then you'd be you know in big trouble if you didn't have anyone who could replace them so as an nq i'm really excited to have that much more responsibility but with that responsibility is going to come greater demand on time greater inability to get away from work so i will yeah let you know how i find that and it does also mean a big jump in pay so the newly qualified salary at my law firm is currently 125000 pounds which is a crazy lot of money but I should say, I did the salary calculator thing the other day. So yeah, my trainee salary was 55,000 pounds already, a lot of money. And that meant that my take home after student loans, tax, national insurance was around 3,100 pounds a month. Now, when I put in, this is just using a calculator thing, so it's not exact, but when I put in 125,000, my take home now, because I have to spend 732 pounds a month on student loans and then loads of tax and national insurance means that my take home will be around 5,400 pounds. 
it's a lot of money. I mean, <laughs> like that is crazy and I'm very excited. I have been saving some money, but get kind of even more on top of saving and hopefully, you know, maybe by the time I'm 30, possibly be on the property ladder. But I will, again, keep you updated with all things, you know, money, life, moving forward and newly qualified lawyer, life. So yeah, that is it. I am now a big shot lawyer. Big shot, I'm not sure. <laughs> newly qualified associate we'll stick with but really excited it's been an awesome journey i just want to say like thank you so much for coming on the journey of me being a student i started this when i was like, halfway through the gdl go back and watch my first like gdl vlogs horrendously cringe now but quite funny and then throughout my time on the lpc working from home going into trainee life being a trainee for the last two years so i really do appreciate you coming along this journey with me the og fans thank you and i uh, yeah really look forward to continuing to share my journey with you. I hope this has been somewhat interesting and yeah, thanks so much for watching.